Hi, welcome everybody to the Spatial Data Science Conference 2021. My name is Javier de la Torre and I'm the founder of CARTO. It is my pleasure to be here introducing my favorite conference for all of us who love everything spatial. It is a pity, of course, we've not been able to do this yet again in person, but hey, let's go virtual. So now let's get started. Last year, we talked a lot about the disruptive potential of cloud native for spatial analysis. And one year later, this trend has only accelerated. The main data warehouses, databases, and analytics platforms have already included some form of a spatial support. And more and more, users of those platforms are getting access to spatial analytics. In fact, you could say that a spatial analytics world was traditionally two years behind the rest of the analytics world when it comes to, uh, to features and capabilities. But now, with cloud computing and with this, uh, the rise of these new platforms, I think Geo is in a great shape. And I want Carl, I told you a little bit about that. Now, before we do so, I want to, um, I want to Carl, I look at what are the benefits of cloud computing when it comes to a spatial analysis, right? I think those are huge. The first one, you know, like cloud native spatial analytics is way more cost effective. With the computing and storage separation of modern systems, it means you no longer need to have tremendous amounts of data in RAM. You can use it at the prices of cloud storage and then leveraging them on analytics in a simple way. Right? That actually kind of like makes the entire difference for projects managing very large data sets. The second one, of course, is scalability. The cloud provides an elastic capacity to paralyze most uh, uh, analytics workflows and that means that now we can do analysis of a spatial data sets that before were just too hard or you will have to have very dedicated um, algorithms in order to paralyze. Third is what we call data multi-tenancy. These cloud, modern cloud data warehouses and systems are providing a way to share data without the need to um, physically share it. It is, it is like if we all live in a single database and all data was just a join away, right? And the last one, but no least, it is on the rise of SQL as the lingua franca for analytics, providing a tremendous amount of interoperability um, to those systems. And in fact, actually, this is what I want to showcase, what I want to focus today, this last benefit, the rise of SQL on the analytics world. And SQL, the good old SQL, and it's been for, with us for a long time, but really now it's, it's becoming a part of a huge revolution when it comes to, to analytics. Actually, if you search on the web, there's a, and there's a large amount now of articles talking about like how SQL, it's kind of been used in many different ways. It's actually quite trendy. And that's because SQL is becoming the universal interface for data analytics. If you think most of analytics workflows, you go normally from left to right, from data ingestion, data preparation, transformation, enrichment, analysis, visualization, and even the creation of applications. Well, now all those different steps are interconnected with products that under the hood, they work with SQL. That's what I mean that SQL is becoming the lingua franca. It is a common language used at all these different steps. Let's look at some of the examples. So you have products defining ingestion and overall ETL entirely with SQL commands. A lot of transformations obviously are available on SQL functions. You can do some very heavy transformations on SQL that can take many hours. There are, of course, you know, many ways to enrich your data by joining it with many external data sets within uh, SQL. You can even create machine learning models in SQL these days. Of course, on the visualization, SQL is heavily defined. But even now then later, when you're building your own applications, low-code platforms are based on SQL. So we have a standard language capable of making all these pieces communicate between themselves to make data come to surface through all these different processes. That is the power of SQL. So now, how is Spatial doing in the world of SQL? How is relevant to this community? Well, for thing, as I was describing at the beginning, we've seen a huge push on geo support. The majority of data warehouses and analytics platforms have already included some, some spatial data support. And that is the needed foundation for our industry to flourish, 
These are actually the core kind of like capabilities to build on top of. Now, of course, the support in the different systems is not the same, right? Post GIS being probably the oldest and you know, like and the longest on the market, still has like a lot of capabilities compared to others. But the features are kind of like growing very fast on all those systems. So it's just coming faster and faster. And um, but for those you know like that, you know, like those capabilities, not the year there, Cartu actually has developed what we call the analytics toolbox that provides a lot of those capabilities that you find on post GIS, but not yet available on these other systems, and it's all available on SQL. The actual foundation of the analytics toolbox with the with a, a, a large number of functions is actually released as open source by Carto. So i I invite you to check it out. Now I want to show you a few exciting examples of when you mix SQL with the spatial, right? Showcasing the extensibility and interoperability of this paradigm. So first one, imagine creating routes with a SQL statement. You have one process to generate the network from, let's say, OpenStreetMap, the data you have in OpenStreetMap, you create the network for routing uh, with the first statement, and then you can use kind of like comments like find shortest path to find the close, the shortest path, create ISO lines, and things like that. So just imagine that for calculating the distance between two points, you don't have to do the geographic distance, but you can do the distance, the distance based on the on the route that, for example, a bike rider will take from one stop to another, all within SQL. Now, even going farther, in this next example, we're showing you how to create a spatial model for predicting the store revenue. You can train your model first, again, okay, using SQL, and then once you have it stored as a model in your system, you can use it for creating predictions, all within a SQL statement. But remember what I said about building apps. Most of the time, when you do this type of analysis, you're going to need to share them in other systems. And modern low-code uh, tools uh, allows you to create applications just utilizing SQL. So if you connect you know, the creation of the models and then the predictions with an interface to create these type of uh, um, applications, I just think about it, we're going from all the way from ingestion all the way to building an application just by using the same uh, uh, paradigm. And I think that's incredibly powerful. And because of that, uh, a few weeks ago at Carto, we released our next version of Carto following this new paradigm. We're calling it Carto Spatial Extension and it extends cloud data warehouses to enable full spatial analysis capabilities. We are completing the pieces here to make possible to fulfill the modern cloud native approach to data analytics, building on top of these major uh, uh, analytics products. Let me show you a little bit of what we built on top of these systems. First, an easy way to explore geospatial data in your data warehouse. Connect your data warehouse and then you can quickly explore your tables and tile sets and get maps that shows you, you know, with the, the type of data that you have already on your system. Next, of course, make beautiful maps directly with SQL. Write SQL and get maps in 2D, 3D, in full vector that you can share with others. Under the hood, the analytics toolbox augments and extends your system so that you can do much more spatial analytics, you have much more spatial analytics capabilities inside your system. And then of course, the, the access to our entire Carto data observatory, already on your cloud data warehouse. We have more than 10,000 data sets already available inside your systems so that you can just join your data with data that we make available through data observatory. As part of that, we're also very happy to announce the availability of Carto Spatial Features. This is our global data sets of core features for spatial modeling. Now, including new variables for urbanity levels, elevations, climatology, along with demographics and point of interest data. Also very exciting, with this release, we're also supporting a new geographic support system, the H3 Global Grid System. Thanks to this new release of data, analysts will be able to characterize in greater details the effects that different locations have on their business performance metrics. Finally, with an integration development environment, all the maps that you design on Carto, you can embed them directly in your JavaScript applications easily. Right? And so fulfilling this entire process of connecting the data, designing it, and finally 
building it and embedding it into an application. But to show you that, I'd like to invite my colleague Margara, who is product manager at Carter Spatial Extension, to give you a demo. Hey, Margara, why don't you show us? Hello, my name is Margara. I'm going to give you a quick tour of our Carto workspace. One of the key features of the workspace is that it allows you to connect your own data warehouse. So let me show you how easy that is. We offer support for BigQuery, for Redshift, for Snowflake, and also Postgres, but I'm going to show you an example of how you can create a connection with BigQuery. So we have to only give a connection name, and then in this case, we're using service account as the authentication system. So we need to pick our um, service account key, which is a JSON file, and then pick the billing project. Then we click on connect, and that will be it. So now that we have our connection ready, we can go to the Data Explorer. And in this section, we can browse all of the different data that we have available through our connections. In this case, for example, in the Carto Data Warehouse connection that it's available for every account that is created, we offer some demo tables for you to explore the platform. So for example, if I click on this one, we are going to be able to see a very, very, very quick map preview where we can see in this case, some buildings footprints from New York. We can also see a, a data preview of the table and some associated metadata like the size, the number of rows, etc. Now, if we go to the connection that we just created with BigQuery, we can also see all of the projects, the data sets that we have available through that connection. For example, let's click on this one, which is um, a points data set, which contains some of the locations of potential customers. And whenever we are happy with the table that we'd like to visualize further, then we only need to cl click here and select Create Map. And that will open up our new tool, the Carto Builder. And that will open up Builder, our new map making tool with that uh, layer already included. And now we're here, we can style the layer as we want. So for example, we can change the field color or we can pick an outline so the points look a bit more defined. But one of the most important features of this tool is the ability to include layers with custom queries with SQL. So I'm going to show you an example of how we can cluster these points using the analytics toolbox for BigQuery. In particular, we're using this cluster k-means function. And as a result, uh, this query is going to give us the same data points, but they're going to have that attribute called cluster that we can use to style it. And yeah, just like that, we have created six clusters our, our, uh, out of our data points, our customer locations. And I'm going to show you another very simple example where we're going to visualize those building footprints that I showed you earlier from New York. But in this case, we're going to filter them so we only see those that are higher than five floors. And this is the result. And again, we can style the layers we want. So let's style the field color based on the number of floors attributes and disable the stroke color. And why not? Let's change the base map to a darker one. And finally, let's also add a height to our buildings. And let's make that height proportional to the number of floors. Then we can activate the 3D view and see a visualization of the buildings in Manhattan. And then because this uh, SQL editor is completely interactive, we can, why not, decide to only visualize those that are higher than 15 floors. And yeah, by rerunning this query, the visualization gets immediately uh, updated. And now let's go back to the workspace. So now I'm going to show you our data observatory. If I go to this section, we will be able to access the special data catalog, which contains all of the data sets that we offer from third party providers and also our own data products. And we can use these filters to narrow down our search, for example, by country, or by category, by provider, etc. And whenever we want to see more details about a particular data set, all we need to do is to click on it. And that will give us access to a summary of the data sets, also give us the structure of the data, some descriptions of the variables that it contains, and even we will be able to see a map preview. 
But most importantly, the catalog allows us to access free samples of the data sets and in the very near future also create subscriptions to those data sets. So to access a free sample, all we need to do is to uh, click here, accept the terms of use and then click on connect sample. And that will redirect us to the data explorer, to the data observatory section where we will be able to uh, access again a map preview, a data preview. And if we want, we can go ahead and create a map so we can start working with this data set, with this data sample. And that is it. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Margaret, for that great demo. Now, I don't want to finish this presentation without something, without touching on something we care a lot at Carto. Think of how many still dispute climate change despite scientific consensus. A big part of this is due to how complicated it is to understand data. That's why we began our mission to get the best location data into the hands of change makers around the world. For that, we have already awarded grants to small non-profits organizations with limited resources working to have an impact on climate change, society, and anything you know around education, advocacy, and activism. We're also providing additional grants to organizations fighting to contain the global COVID-19 outbreak. And so far, we have granted more than 400 projects in 35 different countries. For example, the Red Cross uses spatial data relating to disaster situations, including the Bangladesh and Sri Lanka floods, Cyclone Enawo and Dineo, Typhoon Haina and the Haiti hurricane, enabling faster and more efficient response. The UN Refugee Agency uses CARTO to understand the locations and site of refugee settlements and how to use resources more efficiently to help them, particularly during the extreme weather conditions we now see so often across the globe. And finally, Emberitas uses CARTO to ensure more sustainable supply chains and help, the farmers, uh, help farmers out of poverty. Their mission is to help all coffee farmers participate in a global sustainable coffee industry. This month, we're also excited to announce a further partnership with, the Google, Cloud, uh, uh, with Google Cloud, supporting their ambitious sustainability program, enabling global organizations to better understand the impact of climate change. So these are some of Prince inspiring cases out there of people using the spatial analytics to drive change and protect our world. You can now do the same, so visit carta.com, start a free account, and let us know what you think. We're excited to see it. Now, looking forward to the rest of the conference, and please reach out to me if you got any questions or comments. Enjoy. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for day one of the Spatial Data Science Conference. I'm your host and moderator this year, Ms. Lewinsky. I'm on the Location Intelligence team here at Cardo, and very excited to be joining you all today. Um, it was really fun during the keynote to see where everyone was joining in from, Japan, the Philippines, United States, so thanks for putting that in there. For the Q&A portion of today, I am joined by Cardo's head of product, Javier Perez Trufero. How are you doing today? Yeah, hello, Elena, and well, welcome everybody to this new edition of the Special Data Science Conference. Uh, we're very excited to have you all here and looking forward to all the interactions uh, over the presentations, the chat here, Slack. Uh, so I think uh, we have like four very exciting days ahead. Yeah, a lot of exciting content to come. Um, based on the keynote, we actually do have some product questions in here. Um, and also, as I'm reading the questions, I'm going to attempt to read names. So I'm really uh, apologetic if I do butcher your name. Our first question comes from Cyan Mukopahaya. Um, can you share some of the example code where this person could try SQL-based data science, um, something in which you showed in the keynote? Um, so yeah, so if you go to our documentation center in uh, docs.carto.com, uh, you will see the page for the analytics toolbox. So in each one, uh, we, we, I mean, we're releasing an analytics toolbox alongside the different uh, cloud data warehouse platforms. So you will see the one for BigQuery, for example, or the one uh, for Snowflake. And in there, you have uh, the whole SQL reference um, for all the different functions and examples that show uh, how to execute it. Awesome, thank you. And then we have an anonymous question. Sorry, I think I've missed out. How can you visualize the data in 3D? What extension would you need to add on Cardo Workspace? So well, nothing needs to be needs to be added. So that comes with uh, with the new uh, builder uh, interface. Uh, so if you have a 
parameters like the number of floors or height in, in your data, you can uh, associate that to, to the height parameter. And then if you, if you change the uh, style of the map to be a 3D map, that will, be, uh, will automatically render uh, as a 3D map. Awesome. And then Sergey Sokolenko asked, how do I get the climate data in Snowflake? Will it be part of spatial extension Snowflake? The climate data? So the, the, I think it's all related to the keynote. So the climate data that comes with the CARTO special features data set that is a data set that we, um, that, uh, that we create, uh, that will, it, it works as any other data set of the data observatory. So it will be through a, through a subscription. So in there, you will have to subscribe to that data set in, in the data observatory and then associate it with your connection to uh, Snowflake. Uh, there's another also version. So we keep also curating and putting products in Snowflake's own uh, data marketplace. Uh, and in there, as soon as we update to the new version of the special features, we are putting also some uh, public data that will have the climatology features uh, included. Awesome. And then Rodrigo Blout asked how the models for revenue prediction work. So the model for revenue prediction um, is it uses um, the own BigQuery uh, ML. It's only available right now in the analytics, analytics toolbook for, uh, for BigQuery. So we're using in there, uh, we call to, to, the, let's say, to the data science functions of BigQuery natively. The thing is that we have built other supporting features um, uh, around like how to enrich special data to then fit uh, to train the model and how to execute it and so on and so on. So it's a mix of our uh, special functionality with also exploiting and fine tune the, the option of the BigQuery gives in order to run the model. Uh, we're working on a blog post just showing that specific use case uh, very soon. So stay tuned to the blog and you'll see all the details. Awesome. We have a lot of exciting product questions in here. I think we answered the other one on 3D data. So we have another anonymous question for how the connector works with live streaming data. Is it possible out of the box to add a live feed? Um, well, we are, so, the, we con, so in this case, how the new platform works is the Carto actually uh, runs on top of your uh, data warehouse. So if you have a live feed in, to let's say BigQuery or Snowflake or uh, Amazon Redshift, then we continue reading uh, reading uh, there. So it's going to be as up to date as you have it in 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 your data warehouse. It's different to the previous version of the platform where you had to put some things between the data that you had, let's say in BigQuery and in the Carto database. But now we are just removing this this connection and we run we plug let's say Carto plugs on top of uh, the data warehouse. Awesome. And then we have Will Payne who asked, I've worked with SQL and Cardo for a while, but never dived into NoSQL, Hadoop, et cetera. I'm encouraged to hear that SQL's back, but what makes those other approaches less useful or needed today? Well, I think it's, I mean, it's not that they are not useful or not, or, or not needed today. It's also had a lot of, um, uh, well, how, how we see, and, and definitely our our bet here is that the, the benefits that modern cloud data warehouse technologies uh, bring and, and the fact of being able to have SQL as a common language across these multiple platforms, across multiple types of uh, users, type of uh, user personas that uh, build use cases with, with Carto. Those, let's say, benefits uh, are for uh, like, indisputable compared to, to others. And this is what we are going against now with the product. All right. And there are some folks still asking about um, accessing the demo code. Um, there is a link to our documentation in the comments there. We have a question from Ravi Najudkar. Uh, how is your data currently validated and integrated when it comes to using third-party data that comes from disparate data sets, like CAD data? OK. So well, first, we did this an evaluation uh, coming at the, at the very beginning and say who we uh, onboard as partners. It, this works different to other uh, cloud data marketplaces in which is the provider, let's say, who has control of, uh, of the decision of just being there. So first of all, we validate against the similar data sets that we have into, into, the, um, into the data observatory to see the value they bring um, in terms of either 
the richness of of the variables of the features being there or like the freshness uh, of of the data uh, then there's a common qa with the functionality of the platform and then um, we also check for things like for example when we look at uh, demographic data set we validate that it's not deviate the, let's say when you look at the population it doesn't deviate from let's say the official the official numbers and and so on so there's a big there's a mix between validated common things about the data checking against similar products that we also have in the data observatory and then all the QA with the functionality and how it plays with the platform awesome and then I think we have time for a couple more um, Nuno and Tunes asked, what kind of clients do you anticipate will use this tool? Many, we hope. So, <laughs> um, no, I mean, what, what, we, what we think is, um, well, that's, we want the Carto workspace, so what Margara showed in the demo, to, to have value for any type of user that uh, works with Carto. That being a business user that wants to access uh, an application, so there's, there's a space there where uh, uh, any user can log into their Carto apps uh, from there. The catalog and, and the free samples of the observatory are there, so is anybody doing uh, exploration of what uh, data products can be interesting for the use cases will also be there. Uh, assets for data scientists um, as well, where we're going to have a section for, for data science, we have the data explorer, so you can also, it, it gives you more geospatial functionality in exploring the contents of, of your data warehouse. And then any analyst, data science, data scientist engineer that wants to build a quick map uh, with, with Builder uh, is also going to be there. And, and for developers as well. So we are exposing, so what we're looking for with Builder is to be, uh, a tool to make prototyping faster so people can go to Builder, prototype a layer, and then further customize it with, uh, with code. So we also expect this type of user to, to start using the workspace today. Absolutely. And then we have a question from Brito Dwi Darmawan. Uh, can we render the layer from BigQuery into a client-side app like Cardo.js? Well, I think it's, you, you won't need Carto JS anymore, but yeah, the idea is now our stack for, for developers. So everything you, you see like Carto for React, uh, how we extend uh, DevGL and so on, it will read the data from your data warehouse. Um, so the library changes, maybe we have a new one, but, but all those are already adapted to be cloud native. So the data will stay in your in in your data warehouse and you can build an app on top of that awesome i think we are up on time here but we did get to most of the questions um if you have any others please put them in the chat and you're welcome to kind of network in the meantime via the slack channel via hop in um whatever you would see fit but thank you javier yeah, thank you enjoy the conference